Hi, I'm Eric, and you're watching Fletched Evolution. In a comment on my penetration test video uh, that I did a while back with the pork ribs and the oranges in the core, uh, one viewer said that they would have liked to have seen me cock uh, the 150-pound limb. It was a prototype back then that wasn't on the market, or mine still is that prototype. Uh, it works great, and I like it a lot, and I'll, just, I'll shoot it until it breaks or until something happens. Um, I also haven't had time to watch the Steamboat video about when they're going to release this, so I don't know when this is going to be on the market. Maybe it is, and maybe some of you guys have actually tried this out. But in case you've not, uh, I wanted to make a video about how it is for me to operate this 150-pound limb. And also uh, talk a little bit about cocking and how to get good, good accuracy when you're cocking something, especially this heavy. And also just give like a quick overview of, of my thoughts on, on the different draw weights that we have. So I'm actually super pleased that we have, you know, we go from 35 to 150 now on a Stinger platform, uh, which is quite, you know, an extension down and also quite a bit up from the 55 pounds that we had and the 80 pounds in the Stinger one. You know, 55 pounds is standard and you can put a red back limb in the Stinger one, which I also did. So yes, I do like power, um, but I still think about, do I need the power? And, you know, can I also, can I control, can I manage the power? So my preferences uh, in a compact, I like to shoot 55 pounds because that's fairly easy for me to cock, um, you know, with the straight pull system. 90 is already too much. 80 would probably still work. I haven't tried that. I don't shoot a lot of compact. You know, the, the Stinger is so short and light anyway, and I like to have a, a shoulder stock because it just, it, it gives better accuracy for me. But 80 would probably work, but it would still be fairly slow. And I, if I shoot a compact, I want to kind of be able to do it fast. Um, in a tactical, uh, 90, I like 90 a lot for like indoor shooting, let's say out to 10 meters, um, you know, kind of kind of quick stuff. I can run that quick and I can run it for a long time and I don't get too tired. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trained up on that. If I needed a terminal effect uh, in a magazine, you know, in a, in, a, in a tactical, then I would go for 120. You know, say the zombie hordes bust out of the cemetery and start chasing us down. Uh, you know, then I would go for 120 because that's still, you know, for me, I'm six foot three, uh, over 200 pounds, you know, so you can extrapolate some idea of like, like the strength that I have. You know, I can run 120 pounds for a long time and I'm, and I'm just fine. Um, and then if I go to the, to, the, to the survival configuration, then, you know, for shorter target shooting than 90, 90 is, 90 is fine. Um, I like 120 a lot because that, that gives me a lot of power, a flatter trajectory, so I can make some mistakes in range estimation. And that's, that's got a lot of punch. That's really got a lot of punch. We saw this in my, in my penetration test too. And again, here, if I really needed, you know, to shoot like heavier bolts, to say nine inch bolts, um, then I would go for the 150, let's say, um, you know, a little bit more range, of course, even more energy, even more power and, you know, a little more forgiveness and range estimation. Something else that I shoot that I like a lot, it's a 130 pound limb. This is from a, from an outfit called crossbow in Germany, and it's two limbs, uh, put together. Uh, this, this is before Steamboat had the 150 pounds, 120 pounds. Um, and the guy was nice and he sent me one of these and I like to shoot that a lot. That's, it's a little bit more than 120. It's still very easy for me to cock it, you know, even through like a nice, you know, one or two hour shooting session. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. So this is kind of my take on, or like, like these, these are my applications for these draw weights. And again, more is not always better. I do like shooting powerful crossbows. It's, it's fun and it feels good. And you know, like the impact in the target is, is awesome. Like there, there's, there's a thrill in this, but I still, I still consider like, like, you know, how much power do I actually need? Uh, and I, and I kind of, and I kind of tone it down. So before you go out and buy the 150, think about, you know, can I shoot a far enough distance to make it actually worth it? Or do I have suitable arrows and targets? Um, the slide arc will stop it. You know, the, the slide arc you can get from Steamboat or from other places uh, in Europe, at least, uh, this, 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 this foam, this, this orange foam, it'll stop even at, it'll stop 150 pounds, even at, let's say, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten meters, actually just fine. But still, you have to ask yourself, like, do I, do I actually need this power? So this is the crossbow, just a survival. Uh, flip this over a little bit. Uh, this is the prototype limb, as I said, 150 pounds. That's how I got it. They just wrote 150 on there with, uh, with a paint marker. And if you're familiar with a Stinger limb, uh, you can see that this is actually quite a bit thicker than the you know, the, the 90 pound or even the 120 pound. Um, yeah, this is just, this is the, the lower is just a tactical lower. You know, it's the same as, it's the same as a tactical. This, this, this is the current front grip. Um, I think this is what they've had the whole time. Um, and I've got the release here, just using the cocking bars for this part. So I'm just gonna 
put it under my armpit here. I'm going to release and I'm just going to do this. And this is more effort, of course, than 90 or 120, but this is totally doable. I could also plop a magazine on here and run the magazine. It's just, you know, the, the kind of the, the scheme that I presented where I, where I assigned the draw weights for my purposes. 150 is too much for a magazine. With a magazine, I want to shoot multiple shots, six, or when the, when the detachable magazine comes out, then 10. And I'm able to shoot these fairly quickly. Um, and this is the slowest possible, you know, this, this takes the most time and effort to cock. Um, and 90 pounds is a lot of power and it's enough. And 120 pounds is enough power too, for, you know, for doing a lot of things. So for me, this is a survival thing, but it's easy to cock, really easy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire this now. Let's protect our eyeballs. Um, Cause I do find uh, decocking by hand by holding the string and then releasing or holding the string and lifting it out. I find that uncomfortable to hold the string back. Um, Someone's gonna fire this, but I'll show a different way to decock in a little bit anyway. So let's go like six meters. Uh, slide arc will stop this just fine. Does a good job. So yeah, standard uh, Stinger Classic cocking method is absolutely no problem for me. So the stirrup, this is just a conventional if you've shot a crossbow. This is probably how you cocked it until you got into stingers, let's say, okay? I got to cant this a little bit because I got this, this grip on here, so this, this long front grip. Uh, so I'm going to cock like this here. I'm going to run my fingers along the deck because it's important to cock symmetrically. In the latch, put it on safe, and that's it. That's also fairly easy. This is kind of a short crossbow for me. Uh, this is kind of short uh, to be cocking down on the ground like that, but whatever. Kind of have to bend over fairly far uh, back into the target there so we can continue. And the other way to cock using the stirrup, uh, this is if you, if you shot other full size crossbows, this is how you did it probably. Um, this is a cocking rope. This is actually for an Excalibur crossbow that you'll see a piece of in a minute. Um, and I just tied a knot in it to shorten it to the appropriate length for the, for the stinger. Um, it's just got its two hooks here with pulleys and this reduces the, the effort the force that I need to, to to draw to draw back the bow by half this means that if I'm shooting a bow uh, that I can't pull back by hand uh, then I can I can pull that weight um, or if I can even cock the bow by hand this reduces the fatigue that I experience by expending the energy so this means that I can shoot for longer and have fun because I'm not I'm not tired yet and if I'm training and trying to improve specific skills, this means that I can also work on these skills for longer because I'm, I'm less fatigued and that means that I can maintain mental focus more. So I really recommend this. This is a super cheap tool uh, to get and I recommend these actually if you're going to shoot 120 or 150 pounds or if you're going to shoot 90 pounds and 90 pounds is a, is a heavy weight for you to pull, then I would get one of these because they don't cost much. So how I use this on a stinger is, you know, like I said, I shortened it to the appropriate length and I just run it over the back here and I hook it into the string. And the appropriate length is that I can just get my fingers around this here. Um, again, stepping firmly into the, into the stirrup here. Now I just pull up evenly on both sides. I make sure that the hooks are running along the, the deck. I pull up and it's latched. And now I could load and I could fire. And now I wanna show the other thing with this is that it's very easy to decock. Like I said, I don't like to decock 150 by hand. It's just not comfortable for me. Um, now I need one hand because I have to release the string somehow. So I'm going to pull back here, pull back a little bit, and I'm going to fire. Oh, got to get on <laughs> fire. I'm going to fire. And then I can just let this down as easy as can be. Of course, I could go fast, but I just want to show how easy this is, even with one hand. So I recommend this, I recommend this very highly. If you're going to shoot a high draw weight for whatever whatever your fitness level is, your strength level is, get a cocking rope, and then you could a lot of you can then shoot. You know, most of you can shoot the 150. I'm sure too if you want to. Um, one thing to note: if I'm decocking a crossbow, one of the one of the dangers if I'm going to decock by hand or with a rope on a stinger is that our bolts, if it's on the rail, it ends back here on a full-size crossbow, it's generally recommended that you use bolts 
that's stick out beyond the rail and into the stirrup. And this way, if you decock this, when I put this down, I'll go back where you can see it. If I had forgotten to take the arrow out of here, or the bolt out of here, and I go to decock it, I put my foot in the stirrup to hold it, and then I kick the arrow out, I kick the bolt out, so I can't put it in my foot. If you decock the stinger with a bolt on the deck because you forgot that there's a bolt on the deck, then you could, you could push it into your foot. And of course, with the mechanical advantage of the cocking rope, you know, you're going to feel something you know, pressing on your shoe, and then you can immediately reverse the stroke. But still, if you're going to decock your stinger using the foot stirrup, um, then make sure that there's no arrow on the deck. Now I'd just like to talk about symmetry uh, here in the test bed where I can hopefully show the details that I want to show. Um, you know, so we can cock our stinger with the, with the lever uh, using these hooks or using the stirrup by hand or with a cocking rope. You need to cock your crossbow symmetrically uh, if you want the maximum accuracy that your crossbow can achieve. Um, this is so important for any crossbow that there are even some crossbows in the market where you don't use, you don't use like a rope and hooks uh, like this, like we're looking at. Um, there's actually like a carriage that holds the string and like, and like runs back uh, and gets pulled back like by a geared mechanism, by a crank, electric or manual, to pull it back so that make sure that it's centered. So it's, it's really important to center it. If you don't center it, what happens, or if you cock a stinger, um, you can do this. You can go back and forth. And I'm sure you can do this with any crossbow. You can move the limb back and forth and then you can cause the string to move in the latch. And then because it's, it's, it's biting into the latch, there's tension, it's going to stay that way. And you can do this on a stinger. You can, you can make it cockeyed and you can leave it that way. But then as the bolt, as the arrow is fired uh, towards the end, somewhere towards the end of the stroke, then the, the limbs center themselves again, the end center themselves, and then cause the string to move back. So if I had cocked this like this, you know, where the right end is out a little bit more, as the arrow gets towards the end, this is going to correct itself. And this is actually going to kick the tail of the arrow out and make the arrow fly off to the side, to the right in this case, from my perspective. And I've actually seen this. Like I, I know that it's important to cock symmetrically, um, but with bigger crossbows, I never tested it like I, you know, systematically like I test now. And you know, doing 100, 200, 300, 400 shots in a session out of this test bed, um, I get tired after a while, especially at the higher draw weights. I get tired. Of, I get tired of drawing it back. And I'm always trying to, with my fingers, I'm always trying to do the same thing all the time. So I, den I put two fingers on to not be putting too much like torque into the thing. But then I would start to get flyers sometimes, about three o'clock, high right. And I was like, I didn't know what was going on because I was shooting like the same five arrows over and over again. And they weren't doing that. And all of a sudden they're flying off to the side. And I'm like, this is clamped into the bench and I'm being careful. You know, I'm not moving anything. And then I started to pay attention. I realized, okay, when I'm getting tired, I add a third finger on my left hand. I'm right-handed, so my left hand is not quite as strong as my, as my right hand, I guess. And then when I did this, then I'm starting to pull more on this side, and I'm moving the, I'm moving the, the limb over. And then I actually like, like drew back and then like moved the limb over a smidge, you know, measuring it like, you know, like one or two millimeters, and I could reproduce exactly these, these, these three o'clock high hits. So this is, you know, I knew this, and then this, this showed me how important this is. So the hooks are going to give you probably the best cocking. If you're cocking with your fingers, with your hands, either like off of the ground or if you're on your chest, you need to, you need to make sure that as you cock back that you're running your, your hands, you know, put the same number of fingers on. Maybe just go with four, whatever, you know, depends on your strength and what you want to do. And then make sure that you stay symmetrical. And this is another reason I love the cocking rope because it's just easier for me to maintain symmetry with the cocking rope. And now you can see maybe better, I'm putting this on the pistol grip, here that I'm hooking into the string and I'm getting even and then like you know especially here like I'll press here to make sure that this this hook these hooks run on these guide rods and that keeps them the same distance from the sides of the deck so this this should be symmetrical put it on safe and uh, let me get you hooked back up on the decock um, yeah so symmetry is extremely important so if you want the best accuracy, if that's really important for what you're doing, um, you know, we all want accuracy, but there, there are times that I'm less concerned um, if I'm just kind of playing around. If you want maximum accuracy, then you, you need to make sure that you're, that you're symmetrical when you're, when you're cocking the crossbow. So yeah, I do like uh, 
120 to 150 pounds a lot. I like to have it in my stable, so to speak. And I think when you add a cocking rope to this, it makes you know, these higher draw weights accessible to, you know, to most anybody. You know. um, this reduces the effort you need uh, to draw the bow by half and also to decock the bow by half. This is a safer way to decock. Um, you know, reduced effort is means that if, if, I'm, if I'm slighter of build, I can still cock the bow, whereas I couldn't by hand otherwise. Um, and it also means that I can shoot for longer because I'm expending less energy and you know, I'm, I'm, getting less, I'm getting less fatigued. So a cocking rope is great and it's not that expensive. Um, and something else with the cocking rope, again, is, the, is the, the symmetry of cocking. When I cock these things by hand, even in my test bed where no other variables are changing, I get slightly better accuracy when I use the cocking rope. And no matter how careful I am with my hands, because if I do you know, 50 shots, like I said, I get tired sometimes and I lose focus and then one shot is, is off, right? So cocking rope makes this very accessible. Um, Yes, yeah, so if you got a place, you know, for this high draw weight, I say, I say, go for it, get one of these. Yeah, fun. It's fun, and the power is nice. So, I hope this video was interesting and helpful to you guys. You know, to give you a, a, a bit of a look at the 150 pounds. Um, if I missed anything, or if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time, and until then, good shooting.